All right, all right. Uh, good day to all. Uh, Sam here with you oh, midday on February 6th on a Tuesday. So what do we have here? We have uh, what you will often hear analysts and uh, talking heads call an increase in volatility. Isn't that what they always say when the markets start to sell off? Well, certainly we have an increase in volatility. And there's a lot of people that are getting hurt here with uh, Bitcoin now dropping, where are we now, 6,900 as I sit here looking at a daily chart on Bitstamp. So I don't want to make light of that. Certainly people are, 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 are seeing their account balances draw down. So, you know, we as technicians have to look at this and say, okay, what, you know, can, can we get our hands around this? Can we qualify it, quantify it? What is the chart telling us? We, we, it's, it's not the technician's job to get into analysis of why it's, why it's selling off. Our, our job is to see if we can put some structure to it and see if there are any opportunities. As traders, can we find opportunities here? Maybe those opportunities are on the short side, maybe the long side. But this um, existential crisis that uh, we, we seem to be um, dealing with, if you jump on crypto Twitter... I think is a bit premature, you know, I mean, so what is an existential crisis, right? So, you know, by definition, that's questioning meaning, if, you, if there's meaning, if there's value, and if there's purpose. And if you are starting to question whether or not Bitcoin and blockchain and this revolution continues to maintain its meaning, its purpose, and its value, if you're questioning that, well, perhaps the crypto sphere is not the right place for you. So, you know, with that said, you know, we, we, we can't touch on why it's selling off, right? So what was always the biggest, the, the biggest, well, one of the biggest potential variables that those of us that are uh, believers in the, in the blockchain revolution, what was always the variable that was looming as a real threat? Well, that is, of course, intervention by the very centralized entities of, of which the blockchain threatens. So, so who's threatening us now? Governments and, and large banks. Uh, the, the very entities which are most challenged by blockchain. So there really should not be a surprise here that they're getting in here and fucking things up. So, you know, it, it's the, the problem with that is that we, we lose the, the natural supply and demand and the, you know, the value proposition for where the market would be without that intervention. But that intervention is inevitable. It happens in every market. So, you know, we, we just have to deal with this. And, and as traders look at it and say, well, okay, what, you know, is, is, does this create opportunity here? If you're not a long-term believer, well, then you're already gone. You're, you've, you've moved over to Forex or some other asset class. Oh, maybe you went to the stock market. There's no volatility there right now. You know, everything is being questioned right now. Things are selling off. An increase in volatility. That's what we're seeing. So as I look at this, we, you know, again, back to this, this chart as a technician, what can I deduce from staring at this chart? First question. Do we still maintain a trend? Are we in that trend and are we correcting that trend? Are we in a correction in the midst of that long-term trend? Or do we have a new trend starting? First question, right? So if we look here, now I am in log scale, granted, right? So that we distort things, right? It compresses the higher the numbers. So we get this compression. But if I put that chart and I didn't tell you what it was, I just said, have a look at this chart. What's likely happening here? Right, so take all of the crypto, you know, all, all, everything that goes along with all the baggage of crypto, whether you think that, you know, it's, it's got purpose or meaning or not. Just, just purely looking at the chart. What's happening? Does that look like a new trend? I mean, you know, the trends are happening on multiple time frames. But if we sit here and look at a daily chart, <clears throat> that, that, that sure looks like a correction to me. I don't know how you would argue that any other way. And until, you know, certainly from an Elliott count, until we take out this wave one high, and even if we did take out that wave one high, we, we still potentially have a diagonal. This could all just be a wave one. So it's, it, you know, this, 
it's time to calm down. Calm down. Okay, we are, we are not in meltdown here. Yes, I, again, I don't want to make light of the fact that people's accounts are 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 seeing substantial drawdown. People are losing money. I, I I don't want to diminish that. I know that's very real. Listen, I've I've taken losses through here, but it, we, you know, it's not the panic button yet. No, that may be coming. But you know, do do you think these the centralized entities here are going to shut this down? Or are we too far? Are we too far along to see that happen? Maybe it evolves. Maybe it's not Bitcoin ultimately that is the, is the store of value. Well, that's certainly going to change things in the crypto markets, right? Because all of the alts we value in Bitcoin. So maybe there's an evolution underway. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, the revolution stays alive, and the meaning and the purpose and the value is is still very real and very much staring you in the face. So we're at we're at call it seven thousand, okay. So you know what what could what could be happening here? Well, so first thing we have to do, and, and again, regardless of the chart, what are we going to do? We're just going to start measuring pivots. We're just going to say, okay, if, if we're correcting here, if we're correcting this entire move, well, what was our date of our low here? That's 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 January 9th of twenty fifteenth of 2015. If we are correcting that entire move, what could be happening here? Well, you can see all I've done here is just wick off these significant pivots. You know, they're all, they're all you know, significant as they, you can see they bracket where we're likely to run into support and resistance. So if you want to, you know, just get, get absolutely right down to the most simple approach to a market, where's the support, where's the resistance? So, you know, that's, that's worth noting those. But you know, if I'm going to think of this like an Elliotician, I'm going to just do what I would do with any chart in any time frame in any asset. Oh, I've got a potential wave two. Here's a wave three. Now, granted, that's very distorted. I understand that distorts as, as you would look at it naturally because I'm in log scale. All right, where where are we? Let, let's let's open this up a little bit. <clears throat> So one thought is here, so the, the, the thing that looks easiest is to look at it and go, oh, okay, well, there, there's my three, here's my four, right? So if you, if, if you, if you weren't in log scale, right, that, that, might look, that might look like the obvious play. Oh, we're just put here's the four because here's the one down here. So, it, oh, and, and I, it's a deep four, up we go for the five. Well, you, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta think twice about that because of the depth of the retracement. Now again, I know it distorts because we're in log scale. But so we're well beyond the 65 here, right? So here's our 75. Here is a common retracement range that an Elliott that an Elliottician will look for, we have this, this range here that potentially is the 3-4 before this move goes up here. So that's a, that's a common target where you might find support if indeed we were putting in a 4 here. Maybe, maybe. The, the problem with the four is that we're, we're now, you know, in, in, into the extreme, the, the, you know, we're down to 10%, right? So only 10% of wave fours retrace beyond 62%. So the so first question is, well, okay, if that's not a wave four, what could it be, right? And we touched on this a little bit in the last video that I did. If it's not a wave four, what could it be? Well, what else, given that if we're going to allow for the idea and we're going to maintain the idea that we are still in an uptrend, in a long-term uptrend, you know, it doesn't leave many other choices. What else could that be? If we're between the, the, the well, now the 65 and the 786, you know, what, what could that be? Well, that, so that, you know, th- this is this is the the other count that we have to consider, where we go into not statistical aberration here, but we go into t- statistical norms. So the the depth of the retracement would imply a wave two. So could would would that make sense? Could this all just be a one two? Well, let's think about that for a second. Now that that certainly you know, as I posted up in the room, that, that's, that's some serious bull porn that, you know, because if this is one, two, well, three, four, and five, you know, we're, we're going, we're going a lot higher, but I, I, I want somebody to argue that with me. You know, if you, if you think that that's, that's not the case, I, I, I would be curious to hear your argument. I, I don't know how, how you could argue against that it's purely by the fact that we're in the highest probability zone for a wave two. Sure, it's between the 50 and the 786, but we're sitting right there and we're bouncing. We look right here, we're right back to the 65. So, you know, certainly we blew through that. So there's a change in what the algorithms are doing. That, that when we will dig into that a little bit, but if we're just looking at the long term, if that is a one, two, does that make sense? So if this were a one, two, 
we'd be going three, four, five up here to get to get our third, right? And we were now. Let me change the degree, and we'll go down so it make, makes a little more sense. We'll go to we'll go here. Okay, could, could that possibly be what we're seeing? I mean, it, it certainly you can't eliminate it. No way to eliminate it. We got a one, a deep deep retracement here, potentially setting up as a two. Well, how are we going to know? Well, we're going to dig into this, you know, because that that there's a there's a lot of complexity within that correction. But right now, just based off of staring at a daily chart on the long term, sitting here in log scale, that starts to look like the most likely count until until you can disqualify it or invalidate it. it, it it's hard to argue with that. Big big one move. Here's the two, three, four, five, up to put in a three, right? Now we could do some projections on that, but we don't need to do that yet because if that's a one, two, first we, well, there's a whole lot of resistance we're going to need to get through before this goes higher. So I just want to make the point that y y when in doubt, simplify, pull out in time frame, look at the chart. W do we have a series of higher highs and higher lows? Well, this is when we start to break down a little bit. So we, a as you'd anticipate in, in a substantial correction like this, certainly in the, in the intermediate term, we have a change of trend. That, that, that's what creates the correction. But where are we going next? Well, you know, we don't want to be, we don't want to make too many assumptions, but we want to keep this certainly as a potential count that we, we can reconcile here and say, okay, one, two, it certainly maintains a long term bullish view of the market. So, yeah, is, is this painful? Is, is this. You know, is it, we, you know, we get so spoiled with the market just going straight up that, you know, th this completely freaks people out. But, I mean, it, it's just the natural ebb and flow of the market. Corrections are inevitable, inevitable. Right? So let, let's not fight it. Let's, let's quantify it. Let's qualify it. Let's trade it. All right. Now, with all of that said, let's go down. Now, let's, let's look at could we, could we have a bottom here? Well, th I've got a couple of counts I'm going to work through with you. I've got a bullish count and a bearish count. I'm going to start with the bearish count. Because they're they're both represent, you know, they're both equally valid, and we can't disqualify one or the other until we get more information. So if if I look here now, we're working from that that high as the top. So here's an A. We get the complexity into the B. So we get an A B C into our B, and now per that count, there's some sort of a five wave structure underway. Well, this certainly has nice sim symmetry playing as a one two. Okay, well, so the, it, there's some complexity in here that would be, you know, two Elliotitians or ten Elliotitians might give you a different count in there. But I think we have a reasonable, a reasonable estimate here that we can call this a one wave. Given that three wave structure into a second, we've got a one two. Now the question is, where are we in, in this count's evolution? Well, again, it would appear that what we get is a one two, one two, right? So in green here. So you see it. So just in terms of the symmetry of that count, that would imply that we've put in now a third. Now here's again, this is the bearish count. So that that certainly plays. Even if we just do something like look at the oscillators here. So you know, we we do not have divergence yet. So you know you, you got to you got to question. Everything has to be questioned. So could that be the low? There's a count that says it might be, but from from this count here, it would imply that we have we're just putting in the fourth. How are we going to know? Well, we're not going to know until it finishes playing out. What are we going to look for? Well, we're going to look for a three wave subdivision, just like as I recall, right before. Oh, uh, you know, and I was out of town for the weekend, but right right before I left, we had the potent we had this move here, and do you see how perfect this is? This is just. Textbook Elliott wave. The more volatile, the more extreme the moves, the more you'll see Elliott wave in the market. So we get a perfect ABC into our fourth here, and then we get the big dive. All right, that's the big weekend dive, and we, you know we're, we're bouncing off of that. So where where would we be looking for the next reaction? Okay, so just pulling from our two to our three length of the the, the proposed wave three here. Well, we're certainly going to be looking between the here. We, we've just wicked the twenty three. Here's the twenty three six to the thirty eight. Definitely, you know, a contender as the zone. Now, the weaker the market, or I, let me say it this way: the stronger the trend. In this case, the downtrend. The higher the probability that we might only get to the twenty three six. But note here how we get prior support offering some resistance. This wave three, this proposed wave three low here, offering that potential resistance. But we don't really. Now, again, I'm on a four hour here. 
So we don't have this great subdivision that we see here, that nice three waves that, that confirms and, and implies the move lower. Do we get it? Well, we shall see. But right, right now, that certainly has to be considered. So if you were looking to be aggressive here and you wanted to take a short and you're comfortable going short, well, this is an area that you would certainly want to be paying attention to. But really, you got to allow for it all the way up to the 50. Now, we take note of the wave one low here. Okay, that, that would not necessarily invalidate this as a five-wave structure. It would just imply the diagonal, right? So if we overlap this and we're going to go all the way up to the 618, which is certainly possible, so we, we've got this wave one that, that is important for us. If we're going to stay in a motive wave, we stay below that, and we would I would be looking for the reaction right here at the 38. That's the first place where we can anticipate if we're going to, now if this little pullback here, is, if this is the A, we're putting in the B, and then we get one more little push up here, I'm going to look and expect resistance there on the anticipation that this count plays and we've got one more push down to complete the five-way structure. That certainly has the best symmetry. Hard to argue with that. Now, where does that put us? That puts us down below five grand, assuming we're going to the algo target. Now, we, we can look at some other targets. Now, here, here's an important point here. So if we take the length of one and we project from the the pivot of the two. Take note where the 100 100% is, right? So, and I've been talking this through with members this morning. So, the wave three here is not 100% the length of the one, which leaves only one one outcome here. So, it, wave three does not, as I've mentioned before, wave three does not have to be the longest wave. It just can't be the shortest wave under any circumstance. Now, there, the, if this turns into a diagonal where we will often see wave one will be the longest wave, wave three just can't be the shortest. So the fact that we haven't gone 100% makes you look at that and go, hmm, okay, well, it's, it's unusual, but that gives me a disqualification point for this count where I know I've got the count wrong if this ends up being longer than this wave. So if we measure that and look at it, so let me, let me use this. I know I'm getting a lot of lines here. Let me, let me take that off since we have this kind of looked at and marked. Okay, let, let's consider it. So if I take the length of the three here, now I'm hypothesizing the four, right? So here's the 38, right, where I was saying where we, we would expect the reaction. If we look at that, that's the 38. Hypo again, hypothetical. I don't know if it's higher. Where it's Potential. So this, this kind of lines up down here because this would give us 618, the length of the of the third wave. Do you see that? Oh, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. That would be because we're projecting from the hypothetical fourth. So that would be the length of the one projected from our hypothetical fourth. We'd have 618 for the fifth. Now we got to look at that and compare it to the third. Would that make sense? Because it can't be longer. So if that's the third and we project here, do, do you see what's happening here? Right? So we're, we're getting, we're, we, we, or you could do it this way. You could look at it, it, it has to be 100%. So we take the length of the three, project from the four. Now where, you know, we don't have the four, so we're kind of just trying to stack up some potential potential confluence zones. Well, then we would look at the algo pull and we'd say, okay, let's take the length of the two, or pardon me, the length of the three. So from the two high to the, what may, and we again, we, we don't know for sure we've got our three low in here. If that lines up, look, we start to get some confluence down here. So here's the algo target, right? So this, this would play just perfectly as a potential pivot. Now, I don't have the median line here. I don't love that, but, you know, so then you'd start putting a, maybe a channel on this. And again, it, you know, we're, we're, we're hypothesizing the fourth. We don't know how deep that's going to be or if we're going to even get there. You know, we may have put the pivot in here. But we're trying to build a case for if this is going to come down again, where can we anticipate it going? How does that affect your portfolio? How does that affect where you're going to position capital or value in your account? Do you need to move to alts? Are, you know, if you're just sitting in Bitcoin, you, you, know, you, you can say, well, I'm not in the market. Well, yes, you are if you're sitting in Bitcoin. Right? But you know, going to an alt trade, every time you enter an alt trade against Bitcoin, you are by definition shorting Bitcoin. So you know, it becomes a question of if we start to turn, make that turn and head down here, where do you want to move your account value? something to consider. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But right now, you know, unless you were a buyer down here, and I'm going to show you a case that, that, that would imply that, that there was a reasonable pivot down here, that this, this was significant pivot, 
you, so you have a couple of choices. You could play the, you could be playing the B wave here. So let me, um, let me open this up a little bit. You could be playing this as an AB. So there's nothing wrong with this if you're, you want to be aggressive. So this is what we're looking for into an AB. So if we get the retracement on the B, knowing a B typically, typically will go between 50 and 786. It can go deeper than that. If I get this hot, if that's our A wave here, so here's the B. Here's the 618. Nothing wrong with that trade, right? That's that's a way to be long, but you're, you you know you're not you're not you're not proposing or hypothesizing that you've got a hard low in. You might, you might. How would we know? How would we know if we had a low in? Well, when this starts to move down, if we get a five wave structure, then we know we've got a good low in because we would we would have to re we'd have to recount it on the assumption that the low is in. Because if this goes impulsive, th that, change th that changes the structure of the count. So right now, there is definitely a potential bullish trade here, if you're comfortable with that, right? And given this current volatility, you could play the B to the C. But I you know, would be certainly trailing with a stop and cautious should we get up to this level. Here's the first target, the negative 23.6. So you'd be looking for a move all the way to the negative 6.18. Now, that's a common target for algos. But you know there's going to be a bump right here at the 23 where the algos that buy it here, should we move there, are going to start, take a little profit. Now, do, do they keep rolling and push it to the negative 6.18? Possible. What, what happens at the first retracement? Do we get another leg up? That changes things. So right now, the only bullish trade that, that, that I can see here that would make sense would be buying into the B for the C, looking for that to top into the fourth, and then ultimately looking for that to push all the way back down to complete that larger structure that we were just looking at. So I'm going to bring this back. So you'd be trading into the C, expecting the turn there. Well, then, then either you're out, you're r r considering moving your capital or your value into other coins rather than just take the drawdown in Bitcoin, knowing that you've got now a target down here at around 4,300. Something to consider. But that's, that's the path that seems to play best given this structure and the symmetry that we would look for here in a completed five-wave count. That's Bitcoin at 4,200, right? So it, it, we can't we can't rule it out. So you, you got to prepare for it. You got to have a count like this up watching for where and when could I invalidate it. If we go impulsive here, that would be the first tell. Now let's look at the bullish count. So we look over here. So this is the count that I was looking at this morning coming in. Now we change things a little bit here because we're working off of what I see as algo targets. Now, take a look here. So I'm, I'm simply pulling from the swing high here to what is currently labeled as the A low, up to the B. Now, from an Elliott perspective, we know that a B wave can go anywhere from the 50 to the 786. Well, we can see the first test here, we went right into the golden pocket. Down we go. It's been a while since that, that move. Then we go up in five. We get through the 65, we get these little pumps here, but then we roll over again. So it certainly plays from an Elliott context. But you say, wait a minute, Sam, because you always tell me that you know, when, when, the, when the algos get on the other side of the 65, they're going to reverse. Well, it's not that they, at this point, start buying. But when we broke the 65, what that means is that now they're going to buy the next 50. So let, let, let's look at that for a second. Let me, let me take this off just so I can make this point. Because y y you look at it now from an Elliott trading perspective, that makes perfect sense for the B. But from an Algo's trading perspective, they're going to look here and go, where's the next 50? Okay, here's the 50. Here's the 618. You see, it, it breaks. So again, so it broke here. It breaks here. So now they flip again. So understand, it's not that they sell right there. It's that they wait for the next 50. So here's what happens. So down it goes, right? Where's the next 50? Here it is, and, and, which they sell. Down we go. There's their first target. D do you see it? So we, so we have to look at that and say, okay, where, where are they? Where, what are they doing? So they sold here. So potentially, as we look at it as Elliott traders, just trying to get in behind them, we've got the 50. They hit their first target. Maybe this was the front run. Maybe they're pushing for the negative 618. But then I have to go back and look at back a pivot and consider that. And look, wait a minute. Because you, you just, again, because we're trying to figure out what they're doing. 
could they still be working from this? So when you go back and look at this, so remember, as I mentioned many times, the tells for algos are not what happens at the 50s. It, it's what happens at the targets. That's how you know they're in. So if I go back and I look at this, for whatever reason, I, 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 can't, I can't tell you why, but for whatever reason, they stayed with this because the reaction here tells you that they did. Right? Again, that is not random. They stayed with the short. Okay, so look at the reaction at the negative 23. Up we go. That gives us our fourth. Now we come down. Look at the reaction at the negative 618. Is that the low? We don't know. We don't know. I certainly can get a five-wave structure in this. So but we have a potential low. How are we going to know? How are we going to know if that is the low? Well, we're not until we see an impulsive structure come out of that pivot or a pivot or wherever we get a pivot when we get a five-wave impulsive move off of the low to imply a one. Then we have to wait for the two. That's the next long trade if indeed we have a pivot in here. You know, I mean, it's it's... It certainly plays. If you count it out, this is where it gets a little dicey here. You look, the way I've counted this, I've got an expansion in the B wave here because of the five wave structure into that C, which puts us into this as the third. Right? So this is the third that lines up nicely with the algo target. I get a three wave into the fourth, and then I get clear subdivision into the fifth. I've got the lower parallel here as a potential pivot, but I'm not prepared to just start buying heavily here until I see this get tested what's the test if that's a one if this is bouncing off here and on a smaller time frame I can carve out a one wave then I'm waiting for the test which is the two the two is the push to break the low it's the test of the low if it holds then we potentially potentially get a third a third underway if we hold here and we start to push up we've got a potential for a third likely resistance prior support Median line, likely resistance. Do we come down? If we come down, then ultimately, let me get that arrow. Do we get a, do we get a push here? Do we get a series of higher lows and higher highs? Simple when you phrase it that way, but what would we have? We'd have a five-wave structure. That would imply a one wave. If we imply a one wave, then we can make this assumption. Then we can think, okay, three, four, five. We've got our one in. Next trade, maybe that's the median line, is the two. Three, four, five. Then we start getting some distance from this pivot. Then we can make the case that all the way back to where we started. Then we can make that case that potentially the bullish count is here and the one, two is in. We got, we got a lot of things have to happen because we're fighting this count here. We're fighting that side. Bulls, bears, who's going to win? No, no way to know just yet. So it's simply a process of elimination here. Where can we invalidate certain outcomes? Got to keep all of these scenarios in play because right now can't invalidate any of them. So it's a, it's a time to be careful. It's, it, we certainly are looking for tells. That's all we get as traders. What increases the probability that this low is in? Certainly, I like these algo reactions. That That, that gives me... That, that, that certainly gets my eye as a potential. But now see, now here I'm on a four hour. Let's go down to the one hour. Can I get maybe, maybe some degree of, of a five wave structure? It ain't pretty. It's already overlapped. So it looks right now more like, more like potentially I've got, best case, if I'm going to get a five out of this, I'm going to get a leading diagonal. Right? That's, that's the best I can carve out of this because I've already overlapped the one, if that's a one. Right now, it sure looks like an ABC, which would imply that the bearish count still maintains higher probability. Can I get this push here? Can I get this push up to give me a new high to imply a leading diagonal as a potential? Now, keep in mind, right? So this is, this is what makes this so tricky. If we get a leading diagonal, okay, think about the scale here. Let me take this off. If we were to get a leading diagonal, let me put that in, all right? I know I'm running long here. If we were to get that leading diagonal, one, two, three, four, five. We still have to get the two tested. So we, we have to get that two. Let me get my low here. Hop, hypothesizing now. We get, we get a, a leading diagonal. It's a potential one wave. Where else do we see a leading diagonal? As a potential A wave. So we cannot eliminate the possibility that all we're doing is this. 
right? You see that? So it still could be in the midst of the correction. The bear count can't be eliminated just because we get a five-wave structure. It could still play as an A, B, C. And then we go down one more time again. So, you know, all you can do, so where, where's the trading opportunity? Well, if you're a bull, th 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 I'm, I'm suggesting there are trades here. I mean, you could be a buyer right here playing off of the leading diagonal. It's contender. Let me, let me open that up. I mean, there, there's, there's nothing that says you couldn't buy that. So could that be a leading diagonal? Yeah, sure could. So how would we measure it? Well, if you're looking for entry into a, into a diagonal, you're going to pull from the swing low to the high. Where's the likely entry at the 50? Could you set up a nice risk reward there, allowing for either outcome here? Sure. Sure. You know how how bullish do you want to be? Do you want do you want to be trading in the midst of this? You know that's that's a question I can't answer for you. But this is certainly going to be a tell based on what happens here, do we get through the 618? Are we heading back down? Then we have to look at this and say that just corrective. Then it's just an ABC, and the, and the trend down continues, and then we start to lean more towards the bearish count, which implies that we've got more to go down. So th this will be a tell. But is there a trade there? Sure. Well, nothing wrong with that. At 50, stop on the other side. There's your first target. Stops on the other side of the 65. 3.8 to 1, not a home run, but you know that, that's certainly a trade. It's very tradable. If you're out, you're out. Loser. Next trade. What else could be happening? You want to get short on it? Well, somebody shorted it up there. You know, look, look, look at this. So if we go from this high, somebody sold. Front run on the 50, maybe. Maybe they're using a different pivot. Maybe they're using this. Maybe that's our A. Maybe we get an A B C. We got a one two. Look where we go. Right into the golden zone. Could that be the pivot they're using into the golden zone? Where are we going? How are we going to know? You're not going to know until you see what happens here. Could just be we're stuck in a fib fight here between the six one eight and the six one eight. We wait and see. So I, I guess my broader point is here: you got to keep multiple alternate alternate counts here. Because any of them, until we can start to eliminate a few of them, they all potentially play. You know, it's, it's just the reality of where we are. You know, it's, it's, it's tricky to trade this, this volatility. The moves are extreme. But if you're a buyer, <coughs> excuse me, here at the 50, that's 67.40, call it, target up here at 78.33. There's certainly nothing wrong with that trade. Now, I mean, the, 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 if you're on the losing side, 67 call it 67.40, you're out under the 65 at 64.33. You know, that's what gives you the 3.8 to 1. I'm not saying buy it. I'm just saying that's a potential trade. And there are trades in the midst of this chaos. Somebody bought it down here. Right? So you, you got to consider all those outcomes. We aren't going to know when it's done, then it'll be obvious. Until then, it's just probabilities. That's all we get. Okay, guys, I'll wrap it there.